Channel 5, KSDK, St. Louis. And now, Channel 5 Eyewitness News today in St. Louis. It is 47 degrees outside on this Friday, October the 23rd, and we're looking east, live through our Ion St. Louis. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jennifer Blome. Tom O'Neill is on assignment this morning. And topping our news, the Cardinals are one win away from capturing the World Series after beating Minnesota last night 4-2 to two at Bush Stadium. And coming up in our second segment, little people from all over the world have gathered in our studios this morning to bring you a special performance. You'll hear from them just a little bit later, so don't go away. I'm Marty Cooksey. I'll have a sports for you this morning. That's coming up. And Janice, it seems a little bit warmer out there this morning. It is uh, slightly warmer this morning than the past couple of mornings. It looks like we'll have a little dent in the forecast for the weekend, though. I'll tell you more about that coming up in just a few minutes. First of all, outside with Channel 5's eye on St. Louis this morning, clear skies so far. The temperature right now is 47 degrees, very comfortable, relative humidity, 58%, calm winds, and a rising barometer. Now, the clouds will start to roll in later on today. Our high will be a mild 63 degrees with brisk southerly winds. There's a cold front, still hasn't quite made it through the area yet, and it looks like it's going to stop right on top of us for the weekend, Jennifer. So I'll give you details on that coming up. Okay, thank you, Janice. Sure. The Cardinals put it all together last night. They used speed, defense, and pitching, completing a three-game sweep at Bush for a 4-2 win over the Twins, and that puts them out front three games to two in the series. The Cards break open a scoreless game in the sixth. Vince Coleman's chopper hits the scene and gets away from Kent Herbeck. Later in the same inning, Kurt Ford single up the middle, scores Coleman and Ozzy. Each of them also had two stolen bases. With a 2-0 lead, Gagne boots a routine grounder from Jose Okendo, and the Cards are well on their way to the win. There's never been a World Series in which the home team won every game, but that's what's happened so far in this series. And sweeping the series at Bush set Cardinal fans on fire last night, as Alex Serkin reports. <laughs> Once again, it was Bedlam in the streets of downtown St. Louis after last night's win. <laughs> the millions of Cardinal fans never doubted that their team would come back. But the Redbirds have also made believers out of many of the national baseball writers covering the series. To come back in this series and still have the energy to keep fighting with as many players as they've had hurt all year amazes me. I mean, to me, this might be, of all 18 World Series, this almost might be the most likable team that I've ever seen. I think the Cardinals have proved to me, maybe not to some other people, that they're a great team. They're a very injured great team right now. The Twins are probably the least excellent team that's ever been in a World Series, except maybe the Mets in the early 70s. Uh, the format in the World Series is helping the Twins stay in this series artificially. But what I think you have here is a great or near great team that's injured and knows it's that good against a Twins team that must know it's in over its head. On to Minnesota. For today in St. Louis, Alex Serkin, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Police reported no major problems with celebrating fans last night. The game was delayed on television a little bit last night so that President Reagan could speak to the nation. He used the news conference, his third of this year, to urge Americans to stay calm, and he laid down a challenge to Congress to work with him on the budget deficit. President Reagan held his first news conference in seven months to announce he'll meet with congressional leaders to reduce the budget deficit. I'm putting everything on the table with the exception of Social Security, with no other preconditions, and I call on the leaders of Congress to do the same. He seemed to soften his tough stand against raising taxes. But what I've said was, all right, I'll listen to them and what they have in mind as an answer to this problem, but I expect them to listen to what I have in mind. The president said he is still optimistic about the economy and said he is naming a task force to study stock market procedures. This is, I think, purely a stock market thing and that there are no indicators out there of, of recession or hard times at all. On the Persian Gulf, he denied any miscalculation of the situation. 
I don't see it as leading to a war or anything else, and I don't think there's anything to panic about. I think we've done very well. The president also said he hopes Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev will be able to visit the U.S. before this year is out. We may find out later on today if a date is set for a summit after Secretary of State Schultz and Soviet leader Gorbachev finished their meeting this morning. If Schultz and Gorbachev agree on a date, it will be the third superpower summit between the Soviet leader and President Reagan. The Senate finally votes today on the Supreme Court nomination of Robert Bork. It's all but certain that Bork will be defeated. A majority of senators, 55, have already said they will vote against the controversial jurist. Senate sources say the White House is standing ready to send in a replacement. Monsanto Company says today it plans to appeal a guilty verdict, which came at the end of the longest jury trial in U.S. history. After three and a half years of poring over 5,000 pieces of evidence and thousands of pages of testimony, 12 jurors returned a $16 million damage judgment yesterday against Monsanto. The judgment stems from a January 1979 train derailment in Sturgeon, Missouri, that spilled chemicals made by Monsanto. The chemicals had a trace of dioxin, which has been found to be extremely toxic. 65 Sturgeon residents filed a lawsuit against Monsanto, charging health problems due to dioxin exposure. The jurors say they're happy it's all over. When we first got out here and were selected for the jury, I said, hey, I get some time off, you know. But now I am ready to go back to work. It uh, changes your life too much. You know, there was a lot of things that you had to give up. The jury ruled there is no proof the spill caused the plaintiffs any physical harm, but that Monsanto should have warned them of the dioxin. Monsanto plans to appeal the case. A St. Louis County woman is seeking $4 million in damages from a doctor that she says deliberately gave her genital herpes. Her lawsuit charges that the surgeon, also from St. Louis County, dated her and had sexual relations with her to give her the disease. There is no known cure for herpes. The search for a new home is over this morning for an eight-month-old boy who may carry the AIDS virus. Until now, the little boy has spent his entire life at St. Louis Children's Hospital. He was born to a mother who carries the AIDS virus. Doctors say the boy may carry the virus himself, but for now, he appears to be healthy. The state cannot reveal the identity of the boy's new parents, but they say that he is with a family which is willing to accept the great responsibility of raising a child who may someday develop AIDS. Our time right now is coming up on 637. Still ahead, if you're looking for something to do this weekend because you can't make it to Minnesota for the World Series, stick around. We'll take you traveling around the world anyway. That's next. A bagpipe band, Bolivian dancers, and African drummers. They'll all be performing for you at this weekend's International Festival at the County Government Plaza. Oh, and there's a special feature on hand, too, performed by some little people with big voices. And they're here this morning, along with Steve Edison of the International Festival Committee, with a preview for you. Steve, thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, yeah, nice to be here. Tell our viewers a little bit about the purpose of the festival. Well, this festival is a show a little bit of folklore from around the world, but it's also it's going to uh, feature some survival, basic foods from several underprivileged countries. Uh, show the public what people eat under uh, severe conditions. Tell us when and where. Well, it's this Saturday afternoon from noon until 5 p.m. at the uh, St. Louis County Government Center, and it's free. Oh, good, and open to everyone. Yes. Okay, now we have uh, a sneak preview for you this morning, a performance by some of those little people with big voices. Let's go to that now.
our darling just a sneak preview of what you'll see at the International Festival coming up this weekend. Right now, we are coming up on 645. The Cardinals tie a World Series record as they steal five bases last night to move ahead of the Twins, three games to two in the series. Our guest sportscaster is next. Let's go to Janice Huff in the Weather Center now to see what's ahead for St. Louis this weekend. Janice? Well, Jennifer, first we had anticipated maybe a dry weekend, but it looks like Saturday we'll see clouds and maybe even a few scattered rain showers across the two-state area. First of all, a look outside this morning with Channel 5's Eye on St. Louis. Well, we have clear skies in the downtown area and out at Lambert Field. It's a cool 47 degrees this morning, relative humidity 58 percent, calm winds and a rising barometer, barometer at 30-15. Across the two-state area, what are the temperatures doing? Well, sub-freezing readings across the northern sections of both states. Well, meanwhile, down to the south, the air is a bit milder. There is a frontal system slicing right between the middle of both locations. The front is just north of the St. Louis metro area, not clearing the area, and we don't expect it to do much over the weekend as far as moving away from us. It's going to kind of hang around, which means clouds will hang around as well, and even a few spotty rain showers. This morning, a little bit of light snow and sub-freezing temperatures across sections of northern Minnesota, also northern parts of uh, North Dakota this morning. Meanwhile, mostly cloudy skies to the south. In Texas, across the plains, back into sections of Mississippi, scattered clouds in the southeast, and underneath this dome of high pressure, another cold morning for the southern states. As a matter of fact, the Macon, Georgia has already set their record low temperature this morning. Right smack dab in the middle is the frontal system we told you about yesterday that has come almost to a standstill, becoming stationary. Scattered storms developing over portions of Oklahoma, meaning moisture will move up along the front over the weekend. Today, a mixture of sun and clouds. We aren't expecting any rain showers today. The high 63 degrees with southerly winds. I'll tell you more about the rain coming up in just a few minutes. Jennifer? Thank you, Janice. Because it is Friday morning, we have a guest sportscaster this morning, and we'd like to welcome Marty Cooksey. Thanks for coming in so early. Thank you for having me in this early. Yesterday afternoon, Marty was here for a little practice session. We are not making her do this cold, so let's give you a look at that now. We come out on one, be a two-shot, and then I'll go to two or three. Runner Marty Cooksey was as quick in our studio as she is on the road. In the Runner Magazine Road Race Rankings for 1986, Cooksey was the first American woman in the top 20. She races all over the country, running marathons, the 10K, 12K, and 10,000 meter. Marty also works as an exercise and fitness consultant and is a member of Team Kangaroo. And she scored well in her practice session in our studio yesterday. A win tonight would mean the Cardinals only have to win one game at the Metrodome this weekend. See that? You made a good prediction yesterday. Tell us what happened in baseball last night. It's inspiring news. The Cardinals completed a three-game homestand sweep of the, cards, of the Twins last night, and they'll head back to Minnesota with a three-games-to-two lead in the World Series. Cardinal pitchers held the Twins to just five runs at Busch Stadium. Last night, it was Danny Cox going seven and a third brilliant innings for the victory. Todd Worrell picked up the save. It was a scoreless fourth inning when Cards coach Red Shandies put the hex on the Twins. Both teams struggled early on. The Cards squandered a couple of scoring chances. In the fifth, Jose Akendo gets hung up on the squeeze attempt. Cox struck out on the double play. But Cox was the difference in game four. He gets Gary Gaetti with a pretty strike out in the sixth. In the bottom of the sixth, Vince Coleman gets things going. His chopper is ruled an infield hit as it hits a seam and gets away from Kent Herbeck. Later that same inning, Coleman and Ozzie Smith score on Kurt Ford's single up the middle. The Cards are in business. They lead two to nothing. Next man up, Jose Okendo, with a routine grounder to short. Gagne boots the ball. Dan Dreesen scores, and it's 3-0 Redbirds. The Cardinals added an insurance run in the seventh. Ozzie gets an infield hit off Steve Lombardozzi. Coleman scores from third, and it's 4-0. After Cox left the game in the eighth, Gaetti hits a long fly ball to center. Willie McGee can't make the great catch. Gladden and Gagney scored to make it 4-2, but that was as close as they could get. The Cards win 4-2. Danny Cox turned in a superb pitching effort, and after the game, he talked about the difference between last night's game and game two he lost at the Metrodome. I know how I wanted to pitch him in game two, but I didn't, I didn't pitch him that way. I, I made too many mistakes, and, um, you know, these guys are major league ball players, and they won the American League 
because they are good ball players, and I, I didn't make good pitches that day, and they and they showed me why they won it. And tonight, I think I made good pitches, and I I kind of showed them, you know, why we're here too. So uh, it was kind of a a turnabout's fair play. John Tudor can wrap it up tomorrow afternoon. The Twins will use rookie Les Straker. And we're all looking forward to that. Marty, I said that you raced all over the country, but really you raced all over the world. Tell us about the upcoming race that you're looking forward to. Well, by virtue of my good performances this week, I made the U.S. women's team that will go to Monaco in, later in November. And I'm looking for nice weather there as, as well as a good performance. You've changed your training a little bit over the years. How, how would you describe it now? Uh, use of cross training. I used to do a lot of high mileage and I kept getting injured and that, that was no good as far as being consistent. So I use the life cycle a lot. I use some circuit weight training and some swimming for my upper body strength and just try to keep my mileage lower but more quality. Would you recommend that to those of us who are amateurs? I certainly would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marty Cooksey, thank you very much for joining us this morning. We've enjoyed it. Thank you, Jennifer. Our time right now is 6.50. Still ahead, President Reagan says that he is ready to get down to business with Congress on ways to trim the deficit. And Robert Bork's bid to become a Supreme Court justice is expected to come to an end today. We'll have those stories and more news next. President Reagan says he is set to meet with congressional leaders to try to work out a compromise on cutting the budget deficit today, October the 23rd. The president also told reporters in his news conference last night that he is willing to bend on his opposition to a tax hike, but he refused to say he'd actually back one. The president also says there's no reason to believe a recession is on the way. He promised to set up a task force to study the stock market and its trading practices. The U.S. State Department this morning is condemning the latest Iranian missile attack on a Kuwaiti oil terminal in the Persian Gulf. The missile was the third fired against Kuwaiti territory in a week. Kuwait is promising to take steps to protect itself against future assaults from Iran. An oil official says Kuwait has deployed U.S.-made Hawk surface-to-air missiles near its oil terminals to shoot down Iranian silkworms. The Senate plans to finish dealing with one long controversy today, the nomination of Judge Robert Bork to the Supreme Court. Senate leaders have scheduled a vote for it later on this afternoon. It is a vote that Bork is almost certain to lose. One Republican spokesman says 55 senators plan to vote against Bork. The Monsanto company says it will appeal the verdict and the $16 million damage award that it has been ordered to pay. The verdict was handed down yesterday when the longest jury trial in U.S. history came to a close. The case stemmed from a 1979 train derailment in Sturgeon, Missouri that caused a dioxin spill. Monsanto was ordered to pay damages because it didn't properly warn nearby residents. Both Janice and I were at the game last night, and it was very pleasant out there. Oh, the temperatures were very nice. Compared to Tuesday night when it was in the <laughs> low 40s, it was really nice outside last night. And even this morning, it's not too cold, uh, relatively mild compared to the last uh, several days. As a matter of fact, temperatures this morning are close to normal, if not slightly above. A look outside with Channel 5 Zion St. Louis, looking down into the stadium this morning. Well, we have clear skies and 47 degrees, relative humidity 58%. That is climbing. Winds are calm this morning, and the barometer is rising at 3015. A check of the precipitation across the nation this morning. Some scattered light rain showers across the northern sections of California. Last night in Southern California, heavy rainfall in Mount Wilson as well as uh, Riverside in Los Angeles. And thunderstorms continue this morning across southern sections of Nevada, Utah, back into sections of Arizona, and also across southeastern Texas. This is the area of moisture that we're watching very closely in the two-state area because some of it will start to rise to the north a little bit closer to us. A look across the nation and where the fronts are. Well, we do have a frontal system in our vicinity. We really uh, can't tell. There's very little cloud cover associated with it or precipitation, especially in the Midwest. It's relatively dry. To the south, though, we have the warmer air and the moisture. To the north, sub-freezing temperatures with a high-pressure system. Now, by tomorrow, notice the front doesn't move very much, and this is what's going to be bad news for us here in the two-state area, meaning the clouds will hang around and even a few scattered rain showers. Most of the heavy rain, though, will be across southeast, southwestern Missouri, around Springfield, northern Arkansas, and portions of Oklahoma. There will be a little bit of rain shower activity here in the two-state area. Meanwhile, snow is expected across the upper peninsula of Michigan, spreading into sections of Canada, 
Eventually, this high pressure system will move on to the east, push the front out by Sunday, and things will start to dry out for us by then. Meanwhile, clouds will increase across the area gradually today. High today, 63 degrees, a mild day. Well, actually, uh, a little bit close to normal for this time of year for a change. Winds from the south. Tonight, there is a slight chance for a shower, though. Low down to 51 degrees. Saturday, cloudy with scattered rain showers. High of 61. Sunday, a little bit more sunshine and partly cloudy skies on Monday. With temperatures cooling down just a bit by Monday, but still nothing that's too, too cold. Have a great weekend. Okay, thanks, Janice. Our time right now is 6.55. When we come back, we'll take a look at a, at a bargain hunter's dream. Stay with us. You pick the American Cleaners in St. Louis as the best place to take care of your clothes. And you buy nice clothes for everyday and special occasions. But the bargain hunter in you likes nice things for the best possible prices. You can hit it all. You come to the first floor and shop at sportswear, go up a floor, find women's professional clothes, or shop for my husband. Everything is all right here. You don't have to keep wandering all around in different areas of the city or different areas of the mall. Just hit one, one store and you got it all. Conveniently, Channel 5's Kathy Leonard will take you on a shopping trip on the best of St. Louis. That's tonight's cover story on Eyewitness News Update at 10. That about does it for our program. Marty Cooksey, thank you for joining us this morning. What did you think of it? Well, I certainly enjoyed being part of the news team this morning. I can get inspired for newscasts like this where the Cardinals are doing so well, but it'd be a little hard for me to do it every morning. Well, I considering that you rode your life cycle for 45 minutes this morning before you came in, we can understand that. <laughs> well, I, I invite you to come on some of my training runs with me. I could use the company. Shall we do that? Okay. Well, maybe. <laughs> that does it for our program. Bye-bye.